everybody, Ryan, aka EcoBooster here. Got a new project is my humidifier. This is the one, or dehumidifier. I've had it a little over a year and a half now, and but what it's doing is the compressor, which hides, you just about see it through here. Here's the compressor. The compressor attempts to start, but then doesn't have enough um and will trip its internal overload, but not every time. So basically, what that means is that the compressor is starting to get weak. And there's something we can do about that. As soon as I find it. Oh, here it is. So what we can do about that is install this Supco hard start kit. So what this guy here is, is a capacitor with um, a, a simple basic relay inside. So what we have here is the, there we go, wrong capacitor and then the SPP5, and I'll link where you can get this below. But I, I bought this at my local HVAC supply house. Um, I think it was Johnstone. This is the smallest one they have. Um, and you see this can be used on all PSE single phase, 90 volt through 277 volt air conditioning units. Now you might be asking, why am I using this on a dehumidifier? Well, because that's all a dehumidifier truly is, is an air conditioner where the cold coil runs right in front of the heating coil in order to remove moisture from the air. Its whole sole purpose in life is to dehumidify. So that's what this thing here does. Now I've also modified this. You'll notice I have a tube burning out the back of it, which is pretty funky now, but this goes into a condensate pump. That way I can let this thing run and never have to worry about emptying the bucket in the front. So that thing has never been used. Well, I think it got used once, but that's it. So we are going to open this guy up. Hopefully we can get to it just in the back. We have a couple screws here and then get right to the starting capacitor that's in, inside here. So let me get set up and we'll do that. The other thing we're gonna do with this, once we get the back openers, we're gonna pull the front off here because right in here is the intakes for the side. And you can probably see it's a little dusty in there. Granted, the glare is kind of weird right now. But the evaporator coil hides right behind here and it sits directly in front of the condensing coil. Now, the science behind that is the evaporator coil draws the air in, it gets cold, and what that does is causes moisture to condense on the evaporator coil, and that takes the humidity out. Then it, the fan draws that air across its condensing coil to warm the air back up. So you chill the air down, condense the moisture across the, the condensing coil, which warms the air back up. That way you're not actually cooling um, in the space, you're only dehumidifying. It also helps with the efficiency of the unit, so when you're cooling its own condensing coil down, it doesn't run as hot, doesn't actually add any additional heat to the room. However, it does ultimately add some because you're using electrical energy to dehumidify, so you're gonna have some uh, heat transfer into the room. But the biggest thing you're getting is you're getting moisture removal from the room. This thing has been in my basement for, like I said, a year and a half. It's probably older than a year and a half if I think about it. Probably two years, maybe even three years old now at this point. But it's been running in my basement consistently. And one error that it has developed, uh, not recently, I, I've cleaned it, but I'm, it's probably due to clean it again, was, uh, I forget what the error code is, but basically it tells you that the evaporator is dirty. There's just a coating of dust across the front of it. So we're gonna pull the front cover off as well and clean that. So we're gonna not only open up the back and put that kit in to help that compressor, we're also going to pull the front off. I remember, so there's only a couple of screws that comes right off and we just take a vacuum and, and vacuum all the crud off of it. So we'll do that today as well. So let's get started. All right, so here we are at the back of the unit. We're gonna pull these screws out, open it up. First we're gonna do is disconnect this cord from the little snap. And there are about six screws, so we're gonna go ahead and just start one side, work our way around. Okay, got all the screws out, so hopefully this should, in theory, uh, pop right off. There's a couple plastic clips inside holding this in place. Alrighty. So now here we have the blower fan. This is what draws air through the two coils as I talked about earlier. Here's your compressor. These are your copper refrigerant lines that move the refrigerant. In this case it's R410A. I know that because there's a sticker that says R410A right here. Tell me what refrigerant's in it. Probably even tells me how many ounces, yep, 11.46 ounces of refrigerant. Okay, so our compressor wiring goes, let's see, it goes up into this little box, which is just gonna make it fun. There's probably a capacitor in there, so let's see if we can't get this 
puppy out. Let's do the best method of attack here. Get this screw here. lose your screws when you're taking your whatever's apart. So this is completely exploratory. First time I've ever had this thing apart myself. We're kind of loose, not quite loose enough. So I might be able to pull the whole cover off. I'm looking for as any screws I might be poking through, but I have a couple screws here on the sides. So alright, take this out to the front. I also said we're gonna be cleaning this thing out. So we'll out of it. We don't need that anything the chips. Pretty horribly dusted. I don't ever use it. So I'll use the tube in the back. Um, here. This thing is dusty. Okay, so there is a little filter you pull out that can be clean, but as you guys can see here, this thing is, this is pretty filthy, so we'll clean that. This is all filthy, but this here is what gave me the air code last time, was all this buildup dust on the actual evaporator coil. So here we get our first look at our evaporator coil, and then just behind that, there's another coil immediately back there, which is the condensing coil. This here is the sensor for the little control module, which is that board back there. Uh, just clips into the evaporator coil, snaps onto the tube inside. But this is the co coil that gets cold. This is where the water condenses onto. This is why this, is, this dust is all kind of cruddy because it gets wet. And then it just builds up in there. And then the coil, and this here is our catch tray where all our rudder runs down to. If we look down here, that's where my tube attaches to. Normally this, this would just dump water right into the catch tray, which I, like I said, I'm not using. So it goes right into my tube instead, and then my tube goes into my um, condensate pump, which is downstairs in the basement. All right, so we're gonna actually pull this whole cover off. So it looks like we got a screw here, screw here, here, and here. So that's the four on the front, two on the bottom. I think that was it, and there's anything else in the back. Um, does this, there is a connector in there, but I don't know if that's gonna come off all that easy. So one thing I've learned when taking things apart over the years is to put the screws in some kind of order with the piece that come out. So these screws came out with the plastic case in the back. These two are that little metal box. And then these screws are all from the front. So put all those in one spot. Remember up here, I've got the silver screws in the top part. I have black screws down here. Why they made different colors? I don't know. For all the front screws. Other things you can do too is take a piece of cardboard, draw a bunch of grids on them, and label them what they are, and then you can pull your screws laid out like that. Um, you can also use this plastic tray organizers, put your screws in, whatever works best for you. Okay, so now, flip this on top, pull screws here, pop these puppies out. This thing is a dusty, dusty mess, that is for sure. That's what happens when it runs 24-7, 365. For a device that I'm sure it was not designed to run 24-7, 365. And so these are the side screws, so I will put these, these are the back, these are side. These are the last two screws over here, and we can pull this cover off. Now just for edification, these units are not designed to be user serviceable meaning Johnny homeowner, aka you and me, anybody watching this mostly, isn't intended to repair this. These are throwaway devices. However, I'm far too cheap to just throw something away. It cost me 150 bucks. Granted, it was a couple years ago, but still. So I'm going to attempt to get a few more years of operation out of this using my HI. So, here we go. 
There's my cover. We'll be off now. So now we can get to our box, which most likely has our capacitor in it. We also get a, kind of a better view of everything. So we have our two coils. We have this, this here's our evaporator coil. This is our condensing coil. And you notice there's a high pressure switch right here attached to the condensing side. So the, the, the little control board inside, which we'll open up in a minute, is monitoring what's going on inside this little refrigerant system. So by what the temperatures and pressures are, it can tell you. So this is reading temperature of both air and probably the coil as well. Um, or here we go, here's a temperature probe reading the superheat of the system. You can see all the dust in here. We'll get the vacuum out in a minute, clean this up. Um, so we have a temperature probe here on the outlet of the evaporator. We have the temperature probe on the air inlet, so that's what the air temperature is. We have a high pressure switch here monitoring the high pressure of the condenser, the high side, sorry. Um, we have nothing on the other side. This here is the equivalent of our suction line. This is the insulate line going back to the compressor. And what that's doing is coming out of, out of the top of the evaporator. So this, is, this would be the cold line coming back out. It goes through here, insulated in this section here into what we call an accumulator. This accumulator right here protects the compressor from the liquid that might be coming back into the refrigerant loop. And then ultimately goes back into the compressor, which is, this is a rotary compressor. Anyway, camera operator breaking stuff over there. That'll probably just pop out, but now that I got access to the screws, I can open this up. Since my camera operator stopped being goofy, hopefully the stabilization will remove her laughing from my video. So we pull these two screws. Now this box here is the, the control for everything. And the reason I'm going after this, because that's where the compressor wires ultimately go to. So that's telling me that in here should be the run capacitor. Now, how do I know that there's a run capacitor? Well, I don't. We're gonna find out what's in there, which is probably just a, uh, a, a relay. No, there's a run capacitor in there, it's beautiful. So, now we have this box open, and we see what's going on here. We have our control board, which this is the brain of the whole system. We have our capacitor, which this actually is controlling two things. It's helping with the fan, looks like, and it's the compressor. You notice right here we have a little wiring diagram. So we have our capacitor, we have our PCB, a control board. So we're going to be attaching our hard start capacitor to two of the terminals on the on the run capacitor. So this here is the run capacitor in the system. That's the silver one we just saw here. That's this is the run capacitor of the system. This is going to go piggyback right on top of that to increase the boot the starting torque. Now, they claim that this will give you 300% starting torque. Why is that important? Well, the compressor is a little weak, like I said earlier. So we're going to attach. Now, the tricky part will be how to mount it. So we have yes, man, two wires, we have a clip, and we have a screw, so we can, there's a number of different options to actually mount this thing. We'll have to route the wires up, something like that. Now, I'm not gonna have a whole lot. I can't go this way because I don't wanna hit the fan. Obviously, I can't put it like that. So I'm gonna have to do something like this and maybe just a zip tie, kind of hold it in place here so that the wires can run through the existing opening to get inside. So what I'm gonna have to do is, I have a screw here holding the tab in for the capacitor, and what that does, it's a little, it's a little strap that just holds the, compress the capacitor in place. So now I can pull the tab out and get access to the top of the capacitor. Because what I'm looking for, I'm looking for the labels on the top. So if you shoot down here, you'll see this says Herm. That means Hermetic. There should be one here. It says C somewhere. Probably this one over here. Nope. So if you look right here at this one, that should say Fan. And then the other one says C. Yep. So it's our Common and our Hermetic. So we're going to wire this in parallel with our Hermetic. So we can basically do this. We can jump this one right here. And then we can stick this one on C. Now you'll notice this this one here has an extra tab and that's on purpose. That's if your capacitor, your existing does not have an extra space, but we actually have one. And we're gonna stick this right on this extra one. There we go. So we are on our C and we're on our Hermetics and now we're in parallel. Now this compressor will have extra starting torque. Now we'll go ahead and start finagling this back where it belongs. And this can be tricky getting this back in here, especially getting them lined up, but that seems to have been okay. We'll put our screw back in. Okay, and then this wires, it really wires really could be longer, but that's just kind of what they give you. But we're gonna kind of do our best to finagle these all the way down here. 
and it's basically just gonna sit there because there's nothing else back there. So when I put the cover back on, it'll just hang there. There is my hard start kit installed. Let's go ahead and break out the vacuum and clean this thing. Okay, so got everything cleaned up as much as I could. Uh, the, the dust on the evaporator coil was particularly nasty because it, this is the coil that gets wet and the water runs off of it, so it like mats it down pretty good. Um, the HVAC guys will use a, an evaporator coil cleaner um, to clean like evaporator coils and air conditioning systems, and you could use something like that on here. The, this, I don't think it's worth the time running out to buy it. Just clean it off and make sure that you can still see through the coils. One cautionary note: you know, when you are cleaning these coils, you want to be very careful that you don't lay these over too much. It's very easy to lay these in there. You see, I did bend a couple, not severely, but I have seen evaporator coils and condensing coils where the, they're completely flattened over and no air will flow through them. So you want to be careful when doing that. I was very carefully scraping the, the harder, more stubborn dust off and then vacuuming up with a brush attachment here to help prevent any damage to my coils. I could have taken the, that they would have flattened them all over. So I chose to go that route, keep it uh, less damaged as possible. Now what we're going to do is put everything back together and we'll uh, take it back downstairs for test run. box you use these screws with these little built-in lock washers which is fine it is what it is which way did this come off no that's not right there it is I have one screw at the top one screw here at the side and right here so now I can put the cover back on filter slides right over place now these filters are the same filters you find in window air conditioning units same basic plastic mesh material which a lot of people don't even know exists in their air conditioners like i have air conditioner in my window over there that has a filter very similar to this this plastic mesh you just take it out wash it down let it dry and put it back in um 90 of the time when your window air conditioner doesn't work check that filter bucket put it back in as well all right last piece to go back on is our back cover. So let's go ahead and get these screws back in. And there we go. We are all back together. Clip the cord back in place. And we're ready to test. Okay, so here it is. It's all back in my basement. Um, I got it plugged in. Got my kind of say pump hook back up again. 
and we are going to see what happens here. Turn it on. Blower comes on. Okay. So right now that's what we're set it for. It's a bit low, but I wanted to dry my basement out. And we wait, we wait, we wait. So I just tried my humidifier and what seemed to happen is it tried to start and still kind of went out on the overload. So either A, my compressor is completely shot, which I'll have to pull it back apart to do some testing on the windings, or B, this hard start kit just wasn't quite enough. And I'm kind of leaning towards, and now it's running. Click on, you can hit a compressor. So this is what it'll do, so now it's running. Get a compressor running. And it will run until the thing is satisfied. So that's a good sign. So two attempts and it started. That's why I'm leaning towards that this hard stuff kit may not be the right one. It's probably too big. So I'm gonna do some updates and I'll bring bring it back. Okay folks. So here it is a week later and this humidifier has been running apparently all week long. The basement overall is drier. I don't know what the humidity level is down here, but um, I had a couple of damp spots on the floor that are now bone dry and it just feels drier down here now. So it would appear as though my little repair worked. Um, I'll keep you posted down the road if I have any further issues with dehumidifier. Um, but for nine bucks, save myself like 200 bucks on a brand new uh, dehumidifier. So awesome. All right, guys, talk to you later. That was recording. You're recording, are you? Yeah. Oh, thank God for editing. <laughs>